A new study by the University of California, Los Angeles, has reignited the age-old debate, where do we store our memories? Now, you might think that's well known, and that you know, obviously it's just somewhere in the brain, but it's a little more complex than that. We know that the brain certainly processes experiences, and that our memories are laid down through functions of the hippocampus. Now, we know that because of a horrible story a horrible fact, which is that uh, many decades ago there was um, a young man, 25 year old man, who had epilepsy and as part of his treatment they decided to remove his hippocampus. Now the procedure was absolutely effective because he had no more epilepsy but unfortunately he also was now unable to lay down new memories and spend the rest of his life believing that he was a 25 year old man about to have an operation on his brain which is horrific to imagine. So we certainly know, you know that the brain is clearly involved in laying down these memories. But where are they going? The consensus view is that the various connections between the synapses of the brain, which are you know, an enormous number of potential connections, that somewhere in these are our memories, and they're stored in these different connections. Now, while that is, has certainly got some evidence to support it, it is not necessarily the case. And this debate has just been reopened again because of experiments which have shown that RNA may contain some of our memories. Now, RNA is a, a simpler compound than DNA, but very similar in its workings and essential to life. Now, what happened in the experiment was sea snails were shocked with a small electric charge, and of course, they reacted by going into their shells. And now, they would react by staying in the shell for about 40 seconds to a minute, which is far longer than if they were just touched. Now, another group of test group of these snails was um, left without being shocked, of course. And so what they did was they took the RNA from the one group and put it into the other. And Australia. Australia, <laughs> so what they found was that by taking RNA from snails that had already been shocked, the, the behavior of the other snails that had it injected into them uh, was the same, that if they were touched, they would react as though they'd been shocked and would hide in their shell for the same 40 seconds to a minute rather than the usual few seconds of being touched. So this shows that in some level the experience of being shocked was being recorded in the RNA and was able to transfer with the molecule into the test group. Now this is incredible and of course if absolutely proven to be the case it rewrites the understanding of how we hold memories. Now Anyone who's familiar with the phenomena of, of um, transplant memories will know that this is something that's been claimed for a very long time, that if you take an organ from one person, or even a limb, and give it to somebody else, you know, we take from the donor, we give it to the recipient, then in many cases these recipients have claimed that they have strange memories, and that they have later been able to confirm that what they're remembering, or experiencing, or sensing, actually matches you know, the experiences of the donor. Now, some people have seen this as a kind of a woo-woo science, but the fact is that these are reasonable people who have, who have no reason to make this up, and it's in dozens and dozens of cases it's been recorded. So again, this seems to suggest that at least some of our memories are recorded at the molecular level. You know, so where exactly could this be going? I think that rather than just RNA, that the bulk of our memories may be written into a kind of DNA hard drive. Now, why do I say that? That's because we now know that DNA has incredible memory storage potential and information storage potential. In fact, there's a number of companies now that are looking at ways to write digital information into DNA. Because you, know, you would only need about a, a room full of DNA to record all of the digital data that exists today, which is quite extraordinary. So, how would this information be laid down? This is a question. And in fact, we can see a mechanism already, because within the brain, there are tiny structures called microtubules. Right? If you think of these as straws, but they're straws through which flows light. And in fact, photons of light known as biophotons. And that each one of these is a package of information that flows around you know, in these tiny structures in the brain. So it may be that this light is carrying, of course, the memories. And we know DNA is also producing these biophotons of light. This is well, well studied and is well understood. So the interface between the brain and the DNA would therefore be these biophotons. And it may well be that although the connectivity of the brain 
is where we are processing experiences, even utilizing recalled memories and writing new memories to the hard drive, that it's more like a RAM with a round and access memory rather than being the hard drive. The DNA would be effectively our hard drive where all the bulk of the information we're not using is being written to. So it could be that in the future that we'll find a way to download people into DNA and move them across into other bodies. So this is an astonishing step forward in these kind of science fiction type ideas. Now, that's some information worth waking up for and worth remembering.